He's on everybody. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into Bible study here at Bethesda the Church. Hope and pray that everybody's in good spirits. We thank God for his keeping power. We thank God for him loving on us, for him smiling on us, for keeping us one more day in the land of the living. Come on in. We say praise Lord each and every one of you. Hope you're in good spirits. Hope that the favor of God is at your back this day and that you are operating in authority. We thank God for his keeping power. Thank God for sustaining power. Thank God for loving on us. Thanking God for being so good to us. Uh, where would we be if the Lord had not been on our side? So, again, we say praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God. Gracious for his mercies. Gracious for his uh, loving kindness toward us, the children of men. And we say praise the Lord. Again, welcome you into our broadcast tonight. I uh, hope, again, that everybody's in good spirits. Hope and pray, amen, that the favor of God, again, is resting and ruling and abiding in you. And that, most importantly, you are encouraged this day to go a little bit further uh, with the Lord. Uh, we greet each and every one of you excited about what God is doing. We thank and praise God for this, this past week of ministry. Thank God for those three precious souls that went down in his name on this past Sunday. Thank God for the gift of the Holy Ghost falling in our sanctuary upon one of the members of our church. And just excited about what God is doing. But that's Temple Church is the place to be. If you're looking for a ministry in the city of Los Angeles uh, with a lot of love, um, with a lot of compassion, most importantly, um, who um, the place where the Lord visits, we encourage you to join us any Sunday um, at 4909 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles, California. And we're even looking forward to um, resuming some of our in-person Bible studies this summer. So be on the lookout for a special announcement about um, some of our summer Sundays, our summer uh, Bible study sessions that we're hoping to host in person at uh, at the uh, sanctuary, in the sanctuary at Bethesda Temple Church. So again, we greet you all in the name Lord Jesus Christ. If you have a prayer request or petition, do me a favor. And go ahead and drop that in the comment section. Again, we thank and praise God for each and every one of you. We're excited about this upcoming weekend of ministry. Looking forward to celebrating our mothers on this upcoming uh, Sunday. Uh, thank God for um, uh, our mothers. And hopefully you'll invite one uh, to church with you. Um, your mother or someone who's a mother figure to you. An auntie, someone who's uh, been important to you. One of your godchildren. Amen. Come to church with somebody as we celebrate and learn about the role of mother uh, maternal instincts as well as just give praise and glory to God amen for our mothers in the sanctuary again we say praise the Lord to everybody again we want to begin our Bible class tonight with a word of prayer amen join me father we thank you for your good keeping power we thank you for your love and your grace your compassion thank you for being so good to us and we look forward to oh God tonight to, for you feeding us with matter from on high I pray that tonight the word of God comes forth with clarity with direction with precision and I pray in the name of Jesus that uh, tonight our heart be stirred to greater works as we did under, I would understand understand your rewards and judgments. I pray, oh God, that something we've said tonight to be shared, uh, to be a blessing uh, to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We begin each Bible class, two passages, a couple passages of scripture. Uh, first is John chapter number eight, verses 30 through 32. Then we go over to 2 Timothy chapter number two, verses 15 and 2 Timothy chapter number three, verse number 16. Uh, the scripture tells us in the book of John chapter number eight, Verses 30 through 32, the scripture says, As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth uh, shall make you free. Let's go over to 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 15. Scripture tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God, a work that ye have not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And over into 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 16, it tells us uh, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God uh, and is profitable for doctrine. The scripture tells us for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. May the word of God, amen, be blessed tonight. Let me welcome you into our broadcast tonight. You've been with us the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've been diving into the word of God, dealing with our God who not only, amen, is faithful, but a reward of them that diligently seek him. 
And so as we've been expounding on the word of God and, and combing and diving uh, through the word of God, um, as he's been opening up our understanding concerning his faithfulness, I hope um, that somewhere along these past few weeks, you've learned something um, that you've been um, enlightened, uh, that you've been inspired uh, to even, amen, consider your own ways concerning your faithfulness that in comparison to the measurement and faithfulness of our God. And uh, we certainly thank and praise God, amen, for the revelation of his faithfulness. We thank and praise God uh, for the things that we know uh, concerning him. And uh, we know that um, as we um, endeavor uh, to unlock the revelation of his faithfulness, um, we understand his character even more. And in unlocking his character, uh, we uh, have an opportunity as believers, amen, to amen, uh, 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 rest, amen, uh, in our in our walk with him, amen, concerning his ability, amen, to amen, effectively, amen, perform justice in our lives, importantly, amen, preserve us, amen, at the great white throne of judgment. And so uh, this portion of scripture, this Bible study for some may not be interesting, um, but I find it to be riveting and fascinating when you consider Amen. How faithful our God is in our attention. Amen. Uh, to amen. His faithfulness. Um, the scripture tells us in the book of first Corinthians tonight, chapter number one and verse uh, number four. Amen. That it is a man, uh, our desire, amen, to be amen, entrusted, amen, uh, uh, with this faithfulness um, and to be reliable. Amen. Um, as we partner to um, uh, advance the gospel. And so certainly um, uh, the Apostle Paul in writing to Timothy, amen, talks about, amen, having many witnesses that will be entrusted, amen, uh, to his care that should be reliable men um, who should be qualified to teach others. And so certainly um, our faithfulness begets faithfulness and uh, our faithfulness um, begets Examples of faithfulness, most importantly, the declaration of God's word. And so certainly, amen, um, um, God desires faithfulness from us, even as we operate in life, even as we articulate the gospel. Um, it is required, amen, uh, of us, um, according to God's word, amen, that we, amen, uh, exercise, amen, faithfulness in our day-to-day -day walk. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter number four and verse number two says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And only way we can be found faithful is if we model um, the, uh, the pattern of faithfulness that we have in our Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so um, the requirement I mean, that we have, the admonishment given to the uh, Church of Corinth by the Apostle Paul is that we would be, amen, required uh, stewards of faithfulness and be found faithfulness um, in our own call. Um, I come to learn in life <clears throat> that we only get out of life uh, what we're faithful to. And if we're committed to something, we normally get the results. The scripture says, seek and ye will find. The scriptures tell us that. Knock and it shall be open. Our diligence and our care to the things of God, amen, will beget the things that we want in life. It all starts with our drive. It all starts with our faithfulness, all right? Um, uh, the, the things that we desire from God, amen, to start with our ability, amen, to hold fast to the conditions concerning our faithfulness um, and certainly know that in seeking, amen, we find knocking, amen, the Lord, amen, opens unto us. But that requires faithfulness. All right. Um, it requires faithfulness, amen, to keep knocking even when we feel as if no one, amen, is listening. And more importantly, to keep seeking when we feel as the, the easiest thing to do is to walk away. Um, but that's one characteristic of God that makes him God is his inability, amen, to stagger, his inability to be inconsistent, um, but most importantly, to be thorough, even in his pursuit of us. It takes a faithful God to be faithful to an unfaithful people. Think about it. He says, I am married to the backslider. I am faithful to those who don't have a capacity to be faithful. It speaks to the diligence of God. It speaks to the consistency of God. It speaks to the beautiful nature of God concerning his faithfulness. And certainly, amen, our charge, even according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, amen, is that we be found faithful, that we be found consistent in the day of inconsistency, that God finds something in our hearts, amen. Uh, um, the scripture says, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find faith on earth, all right? 
Um, and so certainly, amen, the requirement that we have is to be stewards of righteousness, but above all, that we be found faithful men. That's our amen charge. And so when we think of the character of God, amen, his character speaks to faithfulness and the admonishment and the demonstration of us and the desire of God of his people is that we continue in the pattern of faithfulness in our diligence in our life. And so as we've been unlocking the faithfulness of God, amen, in doing so, he has unlocked to us, amen, many of the revelations many of the things, amen, uh, that um, we believe, amen, um, uh, uh, care and uh, 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 open the lexicons of scripture to be able to understand the just reward, a rewarding system of God um, that is prepared for those of us who remain diligent. We have a reason to be diligent. He's, the scripture tells us, amen, uh, 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 that there is a reward for us who diligently seek him and God is faithful to answer his uh, uh, charge concerning faithfulness. Now, well, what I find interesting, and I'm going to get to the Bible, amen, it's our lesson tonight, is if you paid attention at all this past weekend, I know for me, I had difficulty sleeping, particularly on Friday night because I was glued and fixated um, on the TV screen um, um, to the uh, coronation of King, amen, Charles the Third. All right. <laughs> um, I think he's Westminster Abbey or something like that. But it was the coronation um, celebration took place over in England. I don't know just by, you know, a thumbs up or by hands up or whatever, if anybody had a chance to check it out. But it was all on CNN. It was all on the news outlets this past weekend. And it was remarkable because it dealt just dead on um, with what we were talking about um, in this Bible study concerning the crowns. Uh, there was a question that I went back into the comment section to read uh, concerning the crowning system of God and the war system of God. And someone asks, are we going to receive literal crowns? And the answer is absolutely yes. Yes. All right. The definition of a king and the definition of a queen, the definition of royalty is that they are crowned with authority. And so, ladies and gentlemen, when we get ready to receive our award for our faithfulness and diligence unto God, it will be a crowning occasion. Uh, for which we are gathered as believers, amen, around the throne of judgment to receive, amen, our works according to our diligences. And um, last week we talked about the crown of life. Is there anybody else in the comment section um, that can talk about any of the other crowns? Just put them in the comment section. If you remember some of the crowns we talked about last week, put them in the comment section. Again, praise the Lord for those of you that are just joining us. Amen. We're getting ready to dive a little bit further into this Bible study. Uh, but we talked about the crown of life. All right. We read that last week. All right. Uh, we talked about the crown of glory. OK. Uh, that we read about. We talked about a uh, crown of rejoicing. Crown of rejoicing was another crown um, that we talked about. And then we talked about a uh, crown of righteousness. Um, and we also studied a little bit about the incorruptible crown. All right. And we talked about the crown, amen, or the reward, amen, of those, the reward of the prophet and of the righteous man, amen. And most importantly, um, knowing that there are beneficiaries of the reward mechanism of God, uh, whether we preach the gospel, whether we serve those who preach, amen, those inheritances are um, afforded to us. But the question that came up in last week's Bible study, um, when I went back to the comment section, was, is this a literal crown? And absolutely. The king of glory, amen, will be crowned in that great coronation, will be crowned Lord of Lord, king of kings, right? Um, and so certainly, amen, as he is crowned in glory, amen, those of us who are joint heirs with Christ, we need to understand and exhaust that full concept of being joint heirs with Christ means that we are going to rule with Christ. We're going to be subservient to him, but we are going to be, amen, like Christ. And in being so, amen, he is going to give us, amen, reward for our labors, all right? He says this repeatedly throughout scriptures, our faithfulness, our diligence, amen, laid up for us as a crown, all right? And so these crowns are literal. All right. When we come, amen, into the presence of God, amen, to receive our reward, amen. And, and above all, amen, like I've been harping with our young people, know that in order for you to get to heaven, you must be registered. All right. Your name must be on the roll. All right. My name must be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it's so important because some people just assume that, you know, uh, when I die, we all go to heaven. That's not the case. You must be registered. All right. You must be on the Lord's side. And we know that to be, amen, through repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name and the filling of the Holy Ghost. But there will be a crowning ceremony and the crowns will be 
handed and bestowed upon those for their acts of labor, amen, and um, of faithfulness to the things of God. And so we talked about, again, the crown of life, the crown of glory, we talked about the crown of rejoicing. Um, this is the crowning, amen, that comes upon us where there will be, in essence, an end to the weeping, an end to the sorrows of this world, amen, a crown of rejoicing that awaits us. And I took great joy in the reward, amen, um, that is likened unto the prophet, amen, unto the righteous man being bestowed upon you and I. But this past weekend, if you were watching CNN or you're watching Fox News or any one of those places that you that you um, uh, watched, um, the coordination of the majesties of King Charles III as well as Queen Camille took place in England. And it was a spectacle for all the world to see. Um, this was uh, certainly a great royal tradition. It is it is anchored in ancient rituals that have roots all the way back to the ninth century. Um, and, and for the most part, if you watch the ceremony, I didn't get a chance to watch it all, but most of the ceremonies and some of the research I was doing even for tonight's Bible class are draped in long tradition. A lot of them are, are um, acts of symbolism, they're symbolic for a nation, but many of them are defining acts of worship for the church. But we have to remember, if you go back to how we became the United States of America, um, it was a separation um, from the Church of England. Um, we wanted freedom of worship, right? Freedom of expression of worship. That's why the Americans, amen, uh, uh, broke off from, um, from England. It was because they wanted to be able to choose their own religion. They wanted to be able to choose their own. They wanted this, to chase this thing of liberty and democracy and not be beholden to the Church of England. So draped in this mat, this big pageantry, this big majestic event that seemed like a big fairy tale um, are defining acts of worship. Um, and biblical passages, as well as uh, short text sermons, as well as consecrations and offerings, um, hymns that are sung, um, um, that were done um, to strengthen and guide the public, um, uh, or actually, uh, actually to strengthen and guide the king and the queen for what is, will be known as public service. Um, and so, believe it or not, um, there are so many things that took place in this ceremony that if you were not careful, you would have thought it was a church service and did not think it was a coronation of a king, all right? Um, and so as I walk through some of the pieces of it, and I'm, I'm walking through a script of of, of the coronation. Now, now, we pastors have what we know as Little Black Book, and that Little Black Book helps us uh, perform uh, funerals. The Little Black Ministers books helps us perform uh, baby Christians. It helps us with prayers when we lay at the bed praying beside someone um, who's grieving. Um, uh, that Little Black Book has everything. A parent that may have just uh, lost a child. Um, a prayer for a family member um, who may have fallen to a suicide. Um, the book is so helpful with different scenarios to help the minister have a frame of mind, but also to be able to perform certain uh, procedural things, spiritual rituals, things of that nature, according to this black book. However, the crowning of a king is not what you find in that book, all right? <laughs> so I had to go out and research the coronation ceremony um, for the king, all right? And so in this uh, 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 a uh, huge um, lexicon coordination um, 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 event that took place concerning the majesty um, of England, which would now be his king, King Charles. Um, there are uh, um, different points um, that are done throughout this uh, ceremony so that it is without controversy that there is a recognized king authority um, that rest over the people. Now, we can get into an argument about whether the king system is still relevant to this day. There'll be some people arguing and saying, yeah, he's just a king in, 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 as, as relates to figures, uh, as, as far as figuratively speaking, but he has no authorities. Uh, we know the parliamentary of England has taken over all the governmental activities. However, the crowning ceremony of itself, amen, is something for us all to pay attention to because I believe that the crowding mechanisms and things, amen, are, are um, interwoven again um, in, uh, in modern day um, um, uh, scripture, as or not, I said modern day scripture, I think the, the crowning ceremony itself, I think is indicative of the things that we will see, amen, in that great white throne of judgment when the Lord bestows upon us crowns for our, labels, our labor and faithfulness, right? Um, so, um, when you take a look at even some of the sermons that are preached, um, um, you know, some of the songs that are sung are sung for all the languages um, and all the languages. 
um, um, there's a calling upon the Holy Ghost. Um, just before the most sacred part of the coordination rites, there's an anointing with oil. Um, there, these things that are done in the various languages for under the providence of the king, so that all the nations that sit under this king, if you consider the monarchy of 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 king, even all the, of, of the king of England and all those different nations that had annexed themselves from England, um, all of them come back to uh, pay homage and reverence uh, to the new king. And so you have different languages. Um, there's an anointing that happens. An anointing that actually happens with oil. If you actually took the time to watch this coronation that took place on CNN, you would see that. You would see the king is vested in priestly garments. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> let me just go all the way through it. All right. So you have a man. The pavement, which symbolizes the day of judgment, is draped. Um, uh, literally, it uses a depiction of what we will see when we approach the great white throne of judgment. So the king taking his march all the way into the halls um, uh, of the sacred space for coronation or for uh, his anointing to this role of king, um, the path that is laid before him is symbolic of what um, those in the, you know, again, you have to think about it. King Charles is the descendant of King James. So whatever the uh, <laughs> interpretation of the scripture is, they perform that rite and ritual all the way through. Uh, so the pavement is laid out, all right? Um, and, and it is indicative of, Christ judging all things in mercy. And so um, the king is set before, amen, crowned and, and sat in the seat in a gesture of this ability that is indicative of Christ sitting in uh, the sphere of influence. Um, again, all the monarchs, all the authorities, all those of influence sitting around him, giving a, a knee, giving solemn uh, allegiance, uh, giving solemn support of the coronation of the king, all right? So the king is presented before, the king is anointed with oil, the king is vested with priestly garments to symbolize humility, all right? If you take a look at the priestly garments that King Charles wore, they symbolize humility, they symbolize splendor. The stole and the robe that even he is, amen, draped with, um, according to the coronation, the, the order of service I'm looking at right now um, as I'm attempting to teach, Amen. Is indicative of two natures of Christ. So the king is robed, amen, in humility and splendor, reflecting the natures of Christ himself, um, who, through the form of God, empty himself and being in the, uh, born of, of human and likeness symbolizes those two attributes, the, the splendor of Christ, the wonder of him, God manifested in flesh, as well as the humility and the grace for him to walk among men. All right. And so if you take a look at that, amen, from a human likeness perspective, you a draw from this coronation service guidance directly from the book of Philippians, chapter number two and verses six through eight. All right. So the king represents humanity, amen, restored to its full dignity, or its full dignity in the glory of Christ and is indicative, amen, of the scriptures for which we read, which says that we are a chosen people. A royal priesthood and a holy nation. All right. So, by definition, you know, priesthood speaks to a man separation. Um, uh, priesthood speaks to holiness, but the royalty portions of it talks about the crown and the adorn uh, and the adorning, amen, of a crown that we talked about last week. Continuous, amen, influence and authority that's placed upon the king. All right. So the king, amen is given various items, amen, they're presented to him, visible as a reminder of the king's great responsibility under God, all right? Uh, the spurs that are given to him, amen, um, which may have been worn by medieval knights, the sword which the king first wears and then offers as a service unto God. Uh, 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 then there are symbols of the sacred and spiritual powers. You have the orb, um, which represents the world under Christ. You have the scepter with the cross, amen, that the king had that represents earthly power, all right, held in a restrained, gloved hand. If you saw the king had the gloved hand, all right, the scepter and the dove, they represent spiritual authority, all right, exercise chiefly in mercy, because this is what they view the king as, the king as an authority, amen, of God, all right? Um, the king is also fashioned with a symbol of a ring, 
all right, which symbolizes a marriage that a king has to a people. The symbolism, amen, of the ring. Now, we see the ring as a signet ring um, in, amen, uh, uh, throughout the lexicons of scripture. The signet ring marks a symbol, amen, upon the priest that says that I am dedicated specifically, amen, for the use of God. I hope this is helping somebody. I hope I'm not boring anybody tonight, but, I'm, but hopefully this makes sense. The signet ring means that I am available exclusively to an individual. So when the priest is robed with the signet rings, it means that I am exclusive, amen, uh, for use of God specifically. So the king, the king of England, had a ring placed upon him that symbolizes his faithfulness and his marriage and his vow unto God, but also a marriage, amen, that is to take place between a king as a monarch and the people, all right? Um, and so... When you see all the, um, um, uh, the the pomp and circumstance and the regal nature of what happened this past weekend in England, it is all, amen, amen, a great moment of symbolism as, amen, the archbishop then places, he places a specific crown upon the head of the king. The archbishop places what is known as the St. Edward's crown on the king's head, all right? Now, mind you, before the crown is placed on the king's head, there's anointing that is placed and saturated all upon a man, King George's head. Before he gets the crown, he has to be anointed. <laughs> And the anointing speaks to, amen, the crushing. The anointing speaks to uh, the uh, exclusiveness, all right? The anointing speaks to the chosenness of God. It is David who is anointed, pulled out of obscurity, and anointed before all the people as the king. So before any crown is placed upon King David's head figuratively, he is anointed, amen, and set apart, amen, as the king. And so the king is he's crowned before he's crowned, he's anointed with oil. And as they place the St. Edward's crown on the king's head, amen, all the nation cries out, God save the king. All right. And so this is the fanfare that is sounded. Uh, the Abbey bells are rang. You have the gun salutes that are fired. All these things, amen, are indicative of this great coronation that is to take place. And so then what happens then is after the king has been anointed, the crown is placed upon his head. The king then is moved over to the coronation chair. Amen. Due to his throne, which sits in at, at the center of amen, the most centered part of England. All right. We're talking about uh, the country of England. All right. <laughs> the king is placed at the most center part of it. All right. Uh, and it is encouraged by the bishop to stand firm and to hold fast and confident in God whose throne endures forever. These are all charges that are now given to the king. Amen. As the king is placed in a seat of authority crowned. Amen. He's still admonished. Amen. By the archbishop to do these things. Once he's enthroned, the king receives homage. All right which means the king has been given now a promise of, of, of allegiance and faithfulness and the recognition of his spiritual and earthly authority. He has done this, he's given this, uh, he has given this uh, allegiance first from the archbishop, all right? Uh, then it's from the high holy, uh, uh, the, high, the high royal highness, Prince of Wales, all right? Um, and then, then there's an opportunity for all those in the congregation of people elsewhere to participate in different ways. So, um, so, you know, <laughs> this whole thing, amen, speaks. If you actually took the time to watch this past weekend, it speaks to the coronation and the sacred nature of the, of, of the, of, of the crowning of a king here on earth that will pass away. Uh, I watched it riveted. But I said to myself, this crowning will have nothing, it will take on no fashion at all, like the crowning that you and I will, if we just be faithful, if we just hold out. The, the millions and billions of people that tune in to watch this thing, you will see the world. There won't be a person on earth, <laughs> under the earth, in the heaven, that will not see you and I be crowned with this great occasion. The, the, the King of England is going to pass away. The Queen of England is going to pass away. All of these kings and kingdoms and queendoms and all these things here on earth, all right, that stand today will all bow in reverence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will all bow in reverence to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's beautiful to see, but we watch it so that we can get a heart of anticipation concerning the things that are going to happen for you and I in that great getting up morning 
very well. All right. <laughs> so the king, he's enthroned, amen, at the center of the country. And next to him, the king herself is anointed and crowned. The queen, uh, the king and the queen are, are, are crowned. And there's a whole litany and there's a whole sacrament. And there's even holy communion that's given to the king or queen. That's a reminder of the service, the sacrifice that's necessary for a king to reign. So if you paid attention this past week, all right, you will see there was all kind of stuff that was going on. There's all kind of, amen, choir selections that were saying there were all kind of uh, um, 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 orchestrations and and there were certain things that were done there was um, uh, uh, certain rights that were that were presented and um, over and over again throughout this great just extravagant event a man that talked to th that in essence you know talks about the transition of leadership from one administration to the other and it certainly was done so that the entire country, um, could see the exchange that was taking place and most importantly for the entire country for at a very somber occasion to receive now the authority of, of, of he, a man who now has the crown, who now has the authority. Now, again, I say all that to say, you could take it for what it's worth because when you consider Again, how um, how we live now in the 21st century and how no longer, amen, does England serve as, you know, um, the king. Now, mind you, there was at one time so many, not only was the United States part of, amen, the, uh, uh, under this, this monarchy, uh, you have Jamaica, you have some of the, the islands down south, even Belize where I went was under the Queen Canada. There wasn't too many people. So you have to imagine just how vast the authority is. Some uh, 60 or so countries, I can't keep up with how much amen authority the Queen of England had in her over 60 years of 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 of, of serving as the queen. All right. So you had, you know, the, 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 the Church of Wales, the Church of Scotland, the Northern uh, Ireland, all these different commonwealths, people coming to this magistry, this reverend of this country and this is South Africa. You name it. Um, um, some who still give allegiance and alliance to this king, some who still give amen uh, um, alms unto the majesty uh, of those who just some who just honor him figurative, uh, uh, figuratively. Um, but above all, the authority that's invested, but a crowning that takes place, an anointing that takes place. And I couldn't help but think again, two, two dynamics at place. One, all of this pomp and circumstance will fade away. All right. The King of England, Queen of England, for all that we did to celebrate them and all that we, you know, for all of the beauty that's associated with it, it pales in comparison, ladies and gentlemen, to what will happen to you and I. If we remain faithful, there is, I'm telling you, God is a jealous God. And I just don't believe that the spectacle that you saw this past weekend in England will surpass the spectacle and the show in the sky <laughs> that the Lord will put on. Amen. When he robes you and I, and when he crowns you and I. So the one I asked the question last week, is this a literal crown? Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, if you think that King Charles has a crown, that he had a bad crown. I, I took some notes about the things that are associated with this crown and how the crowns represented certain victories and all kind of stuff like that. But ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, who should ever hear, amen, this charge, amen, uh, concerning um, uh, 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 the, the, the decree that comes forth concerning you and I know that God will not be undone. <laughs> God is going to show out. God is going to, you think Lionel Richie and everybody over there doing the, 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 uh, the show is... Uh, uh, the, the concert for the king is something to see. You can you only imagine the celestial choir, the angels singing, all of nation and all of humanity, amen, in full surrender, celebrating you and I, overcoming the things that attempted, hallelujah, to suppress us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a reason for us to repent. There's a reason for us to keep holding on. There's a reason for us to keep striving. There's a reason for us to stay in the church triumphant. I do this every week, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So what can we anticipate, amen? Crowns of life, crowns of glory, all right? Crowns of rejoicing, crowns of righteousness, all right? The incorruptible crown we talked about, the reward of those, amen, just like the prophet and just like the righteous man, all right? And then we have the reward, amen, to God's saints and God's servant. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter number 11, hallelujah. 
I get excited, y'all, amen, when I consider, amen, just the nuances associated with the text and, and the revelation that comes from the natural things we see, amen. But know the ladies and gentlemen, you and I, one of these, one of these days, one of these days, it's going to make sense. One of these days, you're, it's going to make sense why you couldn't give up. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles and mayhem. There. <laughs> ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Revelation, chapter number 11. And I get happy when I really consider it. Amen. Uh, Revelation chapter number 18, uh, uh, chapter number 11 and verse number 18 tells us this. If you're still with me tonight, I know I lose people because he's like, yeah, whatever. But Revelation 11, 18 says, and the nations were angry and they, and, 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 and thy wrath has come um, at the time of the dead that they should be judged and that uh, thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name small and great, and should just destroy them which destroy the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, God's rewarding system is for you and I, all right? God's reward system, amen, is for the least and for the greatest, all right? It is for the preacher and it's for the saint. It's for everybody in between. It's for the prophet, amen. We all, amen, are going to be given the, amen, ability and the authority to reign when we are crowned with authority. I talked about it last week, what the crown symbolizes, why you must be crowned, why you must be crowned, ladies and gentlemen. Without a crown, you don't have authority. So it is a literal, uh, amen, crowning that's going to take place that gives you authority that is going to be the anger of nations. You don't understand it. You think you got people upset with you right now. Can't wait till you get crowned and nations are angry at you. <laughs> um, that we should judge just like Christ would judge. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Uh, we're going to receive crowns of gold. All right. We didn't get a chance to talk about this, but crowns of gold. gold. What do crowns of gold symbolize? All right. Uh, 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 the gold speaks to refinement, the most precious crown, the most precious, amen, metal or stone or uh, uh, um, uh, material that is known to mankind. All right. Um, that is only perfected through fire. All right. Will be what is placed upon our heads. Pure gold. All right. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter number four. Revelation 4 and 4. Revelation 4, all right, talks about this. And round about the throne were four and twenty elders, or, or four and twenty seats, okay? And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, all right? Uh, they were clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads um, gold crowns, all right? So the crowns that we're talking about, again, crowns of gold. Let's go to the book of uh, Revelation chapter number 3. And verse number 11, Revelation 3 and verse number 11 says, um, uh, concerning these crowns of gold, amen, tell us this, behold, I come quickly, hold fast to which thou hast that no man take thy crown, all right? Um, and I love, I love, I love the next verse that comes along with it because it talks about him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God in the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which come down out of heaven out of my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Let he that have an ear hear the spirit say into the church. And I remember this, I love this one in particular because he's talking to the church of, of uh, Philadelphia and he was talking about them having a little strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. He talked about them. Amen. He says, uh, he said, I know that works. He says, I've set before you an open door that no man shall shut. He talks about how they have not denied his name. He says, you are of a little strength. Hallelujah. And because thou hast kept my word. And he, he, I love how he uses that example of a little strength. But he goes on to say the little strength because of their patience. Amen. Not only he says, am I going to give you a crown which no man can take away, a gold crown. He says, um, he says, I will make thee a pillar. I will make a pillar. Amen. In the temple of my God. The small strength becomes now the anchor of the temple of God. We use pillars to fortify. We use pillars to keep things up. Ladies and gentlemen, our strength, our endurance, our overcoming, it may seem small and it may seem insignificant, but it's mighty to God. It, the foundation of heaven is built upon your faith. Hallelujah. The foundation of the most glorious place on earth is built upon your little strength. 
You may not, you may feel like it's in your little prayer life, your little press. It may seem insignificant. Oh, it won't matter. It won't matter if, if I skip this. It won't matter if I don't fast this week. It don't matter if I, amen, uh, 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 take a week off from church. It won't matter this or that. It's your little bit of strength that's holding heaven together. I could run around this block right now. I need some help in this block. I need some help tonight. It's your little bit of strength that holds heaven together. He says it is becomes a pillar. Your little strength becomes the pillar of the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. Hallelujah. Your little bit of strength, it may seem insignificant, but it's your little bit of strength that is holding heaven to I need you to catch the scriptures. <laughs> He says, he that overcometh. You may not think like it's a big thing. Ah, well, nobody will miss me No, if, if I don't come through. If, if you don't understand that it's your little prayer that you think is so significant, your little bit of devotion, your little bit of time that you give, your little bit of press, your little bit of keep going in a day and age when people are losing their minds. God says it is the foundation of heaven that are built. The pillar of heaven is built on your press. And that's why your press is so important because God says, I will remember your little bit of strength and I will reward you accordingly. Why? Because that's the kind of God that we, that's the kind of justice he serves. He takes your little and he says, I'll build a whole city around your little. Oh God. Huh. Hallelujah. Do you know how we get forces? We get forces from small seeds. Do you know how we get, amen, the big things that we see in life? We get them from the small things. You have got to learn to stop making yourself, amen, and your and your exercises of faith insignificant. It is what's holding heaven together. It is what's holding the temple of God. It is going to be unveiled. Your little bit of strength is going to be revealed on a stage that you have never seen before. God says, I am. I am so I am so faithful in my justice and my rewarding system. I'll take the little bit that you have and blow the whole thing up <laughs> for display for all nations to sour at, for all nations to be at envy with. That's the kind of guy. That's how he sees justice. <laughs> His justice is if you give me a little bit. <sighs> faithful over a few things, I reward you. Who goes from few to many? That's God's math. That's that's God's mathematical formulas that just don't make sense for you and I. So when you cry, when you press, when you keep enduring, when you want to give up, let's just talk tonight, church. Come on now. That's how faithful God is in his rewarding and judgment system. Hallelujah. And do you think for one moment that there will be more views <laughs> than King Charles, than, amen, than the entire, amen, intergalactic world and space and every creature and living thing seeing you be robed and crowned because of your little bit of faith in this season? God says, no, I'm a jealous God. <laughs> crowned with gold, all right, crowned with a material that's precious, crowned with a material, hallelujah, hallelujah, um, that stands, even the, the fire refines it. He says, you will be crowned with this, amen, and I love this, y'all, I love this, I love this, I love this, I love this, because these crowns that we have, hallelujah, these crowns that are invested of us, amen, these crowns that are placed before us, <laughs> Hallelujah. The crown of life, amen, is a direct, it's the small seed of faith, amen, that has you pressing, amen. When you feel like giving up, the reward is a crown of life. You denying yourself, you denying your flesh, the reward and the benefit, it just doesn't add up. The crown of life that no one can take away from you, the crown of rejoicing for your investment in tears. God is something, God is something else, y'all. God, <laughs> God is something else. Hallelujah. The rewarding system of God. He is that kind of God. He is that faithful of a God to remember your little bit of strength and says, with that little bit of strength, I'm going to magnify it beyond measure, amen, and build the precipice of the greatest, amen. It's inconceivable. It's hard to describe heaven. I could take you through all the foundations and what do all the materials mean and, and, and how the city is layered and the mansions and amen, how numeratically it won't make sense and a number upon all numbers and crystal clear lakes and uh, being a place where you talk about solar energy, you talk about a place, amen, where the light of his glory lights the entire place. It, it still pales in comparison, y'all. <laughs> 
Amen. It pales it. You can't even put to words, amen, what it is that makes heaven heaven. But ladies and gentlemen, your little strength fuels it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But ladies and gentlemen, because we serve a God, amen, that is a rewarder, we also serve a God, amen, who is a God of judgment as well. Amen. And, and and trust and believe, amen, that there are judgments that are just not for the believers. There are judgments for the unbelievers. And this is where we're going to lose a lot of people because no one wants to hear about this side of God. Amen. Where God has to execute judgment for those who don't have little strength. When God has to, amen, execute judgment for those who lack faith. All right. Although the wicked are sometimes judged in this life, we see right now there, if you'll be honest with yourself, I can wave my hand and say there have been times when I've been judged for my lack of faith here on earth. I've been judged for my disobedience here on earth. And although we sometimes face judgment and earth, the final and the internal judgment of the ungodly takes place again at the white growth, at the white, uh, uh, great white throne of judgment as well at the close of the thousand years of the kingdom period. Amen. That we read about. Amen. Um, in the book of Revelation, chapter number 20. All right. Um, all are judged out of the out of the same book. All right. Out of the books, according to their works. OK. The scripture tells us this. If you go to the book of Daniel, chapter number seven, I'm just going to do some reading, uh, jumping around. So if if whoever's in the comment section can just monitor and just place these scriptures, you can go back and take a look at it. But the book of Daniel, chapter number seven and verse number 10 Um when Daniel has the dream of the of the beast, he says this in Daniel chapter number seven and verse number 10, if you're still with me, all right, he says a fiery steam or a fiery stream issued and came forth before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. We're talking about again, this, this scene of judgment. The judgment was set and the books were open. God, and, uh, again, we serve a God in his judgment who is faithful to forget, but he's also a God of, amen, <laughs> where, where our acts are being judged accordingly, okay? And so the scripture says that in this day and time, amen, you had all these people who stood before him, amen, and the judgment was set. And the scripture says, amen, the books were open. If you go over to um, verse number 22 through verse number 26, it says this, until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high. Um, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he, say, thus he says, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be, uh, uh, which shall be um, um, diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. And verse number 24 says, and the 10 horns out of the kingdom are 10 kings that shall rise and another shall uh, rise after them and uh, shall be diverse from the first um, and he shall subdue three kings. And, and make sure you have, uh, verse number 25 says, all right, and he shall speak great words against uh, the most high. All right, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to charge, or and, and to think to change times and laws that they uh, shall be given into His hand until a time, times, and the dividing of times. But verse number twenty six says, "But the judgment shall sit, and shall take away His dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end." All right. So again, when we talk about the judgment of the unbelievers, all right. All of our ju uh, judgments, amen, will be judged out of books according to their works, all right? Um, go to the book of Acts, chapter number 24. Acts 24. Acts 24 and verse number 28. Actually, I miss, I miss, I missed up. Hang on a second. Uh, actually, no, no, uh, Acts chapter number 17, Acts chapter number 17, sorry, y'all, Acts 17, and verse number 31, all right, tells us, because he have appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he raised him from the dead, again, Point of day is coming 
in which the judge, amen, in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he have ordained. We know that to be, amen, all right, Jesus Christ, all right? Judgment is coming. The book of Jude tells us this, Jude 14 and 15. Jude 14 and 15, again, talking about the reward system, judgment system of God. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all, all right? And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which, ha which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against thee, all right? Uh, I'm sorry, against against him, all right? The judgment is coming, amen? There is record of the things that we do that aren't pleasing to God. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after what? Their own lust, their mouth speak against, or, or their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons and uh, having men's uh, persons in, uh, at uh, admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he, uh, how they that told you um, there shall be mockers in the last day who shall walk after their own ungodly lust. All right. Uh, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having the spirit. All right. So, again, when we talk about. Amen. Uh, the end times, we talk about the judgment. We're talking about exclusive people who will face the outcome, amen, of this judgment during this period of time. Can we go further? All right. <laughs> the book of uh, the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter number nine, verse number 27 speaks of this as well. And it is appointed unto man once to die. But after this, what the judgment? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, you know, again, judgment is coming. Amen. The judgment for those who are unbelievers is at hand. We also see the judgment. Amen. In scripture, judgment came what? It came upon Sodom and Gomorrah for all of the uh, cantankerous ways and for all of the evil um, uh, 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 the, the, the sin that took place during that period of time. Judgment hit, amen, Sodom and Gomorrah, all right? Uh, Tyre and Sidon is another place in scriptures, amen, Capernaum. All of these were modern cities, all right, at the time that all faced judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, judgment, amen, is being delayed for the great white throne of judgment, but we're seeing judgment even right now. I talked the other day in, in our morning prayer, um, right, in our noonday prayer about we, the people of God, having the power, amen, if we pray and we seek God's face, turn from our wicked ways, amen, the authority to reverse the judgments that are happening here on earth reside in the power of the saints, even now, amen, when we pray and seek his face, Healing can take place right now. The end to a lot of stuff, amen, that we're seeing right now, amen, is a result of a country that talks up prayer, talks it up, but doesn't pray. Yeah, because the very people who tout, and I know I'm going on a sidebar, the, the, the very people who tout, amen, keep my guns, are the very people who are supposed to be the ones leading prayer. Right? You know, the very ones touting, amen, uh, 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 reform, amen, in our school systems and, and reform in our in our schools and, and all the craziness that we're seeing, amen. Uh, you see the conundrum, amen, of a people with the power to pray that won't pray because we're more invested in our civil liberties and protections than, than, than prayer itself. Ladies and gentlemen, the judgments that we're seeing, the judgments and the epidemics that we're seeing in our time, amen, I believe, this is just me, amen, this is just me, I think it's a result, amen, of a people, amen, who profess a relationship with God, amen, but don't exercise the power and authority, amen, to reverse course even now. There are some things I believe, amen, that if we prayed, amen, we wouldn't see them right now. It's not a byproduct of, of decision. Yes, I believe, amen, that we have an authority as believers to put our prayers in motion to get God, amen, to change his mind concerning certain things. How do we know this? Wasn't it Lot who, Lot, or wasn't it Abram's, Abraham's, amen, prayer, amen, Abraham's prayer unto God, amen, his petitioning of God, a supplication unto God, amen, who changed the course of Lot to help Lot make it out of the city? Hallelujah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the indictment is on us. Amen. God, amen, has reserved judgment for the unbelievers. And it's a harsh truth. It is, it's stuff that we don't want to hear, but we have, we lack the priority of prayer. And we want to know what's going on. We want to know why we can't go buy groceries. Why we can't go, amen, our kids can't go to school without wondering oh, who, who's in a bad mood today. We want to know why our kids are more self-medicated. These kids are, 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 are drugged up for emotional issues that prayer can be the answer to. We don't believe in uh, and, 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 and blessing our kids anymore, anointing our kids anymore. Putting, uh, just call me old school. But I, I, I could, I, I remember going, going to, 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 to school a number of days with the, with the, with the oil stains on my head, and, and people laughing at us. But we had, we never had to worry about people coming to school to shooting us up. Now church is optional for some of us. It's optional if your kids want to come to church. And I'm talking to grown folk. It's optional that your 40 year old has a relationship with God or not. Well, he grown. He can. No. Nah. I, I mean, and I know I'm a pastor. But I remember there was a time before I started pastoring when my brother and I were in school. And, and yes, church was optional. But if my mom and them caught wind, amen, we were at San Diego State and they had moved, amen, up, up a little ways from us. But if they heard that we were missing church, amen, y'all need to get in church. They never stopped parenting us. They never stopped. They, they did. That, that was always in our hearts. Amen. Uh, 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 and, and I believe that's the reason why I can be found in church today, because church wasn't optional. Now we just, yeah, you know, if you want to come, you want to come. No, we're going to pray. There's some things you need to speak some things. Yeah, you grown. Yeah, you 40. Yeah, you 50. Yeah, you got a business. Yeah, you got a home. Yeah, you got all kind of stuff. Yeah, what have you. But you need God. And your grandchildren need God. And you need to come to church. <laughs> you need to be saved. And I certainly believe, amen, that if Abram hadn't went to God, Abraham hadn't went to God on behalf of Lot, Lot would have been wiped out. So don't tell me that our prayers don't work because it was his fleecing of God. It was his prayer petition unto God, amen, that had a reserved judgment upon Lot. We don't like to preach this stuff, y'all. Lot was going down. Why? Lot was the gatekeeper. Lot was responsible for letting all, amen, the suspect folk come in to the community. Lot was the one who sat. Lot was the gatekeeper to Sodom and Gomorrah, which means the foolishness that got into God, that got into Solomon, that got into Sodom and Gomorrah, amen, Lot was responsible for. He was the one letting them in. He was the one letting in the pedophilers. He was the one letting in the wayward men. He was the one letting in that spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to take responsibility. You are the gatekeeper. <laughs> you want to blame the pastor for the craziness going on in your house. You want to blame the pastor for the toxicity happening in your home, in your life. You're the gatekeeper. You don't want to let them in. But thanks be to God that you and I that are invested with power can take authority through prayer to have God stay his hand of judgment. I believe right now that the reason why, amen, your, that your place has not been targeted for terrorism and for a mental breakdown is because I believe in the authority that we have, amen, as believers in the power, amen, that, that the enemy just don't want to mess with y'all. He just does not want to. <laughs> I talked about this Sunday. There are some of us who don't pray enough to be on the radar of the enemy. There's, I don't have to worry about them. They don't pray. They don't pray enough to give you a headache. You know what I mean? They don't pray enough to mess over your bills. You don't, you don't matter enough to the enemy. But to those of us that have some power with God, have the ability to say, stay your hand. You won't come no further. No, you won't. No, you won't. You won't come up on this neighborhood with this nonsense. You won't come up in this neighborhood. And I really believe that if we stepped into the authority that God has given us, hallelujah, he's given us this ability. Y'all. It's on the inside of us. We got to stop faking the Holy Ghost. We got to stop faking this just emotionalism. You got to have some power on the inside of you. Help me tonight. I'm preaching whether you say amen or not. But yeah. The believer, the unbeliever, amen, can, uh, again, and we've all been there before. We've all been there before. 
<laughs> the uh, judgment is not something we have to wait on the great white throne of judgment for. God is judging some of us right now and giving us space to repent and giving us space to come back to God. But you're so disinterested. You on season nine of this Netflix stuff. You don't pray. You don't lay before God. You don't ask God to circumcise your heart. You don't have a care for God at all until it's 11 o'clock on Sunday. But then you want him to be a genie and a miracle worker for you to give you mental relief so that you can go out and do the, the same message mess at 1.30 on Sunday that you've been messing with all week. And, and I hear the Lord saying, some of us are seeing judgment right now. And, it, and, 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 and it's time for the church to stand up. It's time for us to take authority. There's a book, y'all. <laughs> Daniel says they were lined up by the tens of thousands and they all stood and heard their response. It doesn't have to be that way. If we repent now, it doesn't have to be that way, y'all. There's authority locked into us. Like I said today on the prayer line, it makes no sense to have power if you don't exercise authority. What good is having power and you take no authority? The believer with the gift of the Holy Ghost needs to take authority. We have authority over our communities. We have authority. Well, I think that didn't go over too well, but it's, it's all right. There are war rewards for the unbeliever. Hallelujah. God speaks of rewards to both the righteous and the wicked. And the Lord, amen, <laughs> said that he would reward the wicked according to their works. The scripture talks about, amen, uh, 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 Balaam, amen, receiving the reward and wages of unrighteousness. Go with me over to the book of uh, 2 Peter, chapter number 2. 2 Peter, chapter number 2, uh, verses 13 through 15. All right. Scripture tells us, amen, concerning this, he says, and shall receive... <laughs> <laughs> shall receive the word of unrighteousness as they count in pleasure to write in daytime spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery that they cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls in heart uh, they have exercised with covetous practices uh, um, uh, cursed children all right, which have forsaken the way and have gone astray, following the way after Balaam, the son of, of uh, uh, Bosar, amen, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Yeah, unrighteousness. Uh, 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 the rewards of the unbeliever, um, Judas received his reward as well. All right, the book of Acts tells us, in the book of Acts chapter number one, tells us that Judas received the reward of iniquity. All right, uh, so all the godless and, 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 and wicked will receive their reward according to their evil deeds. That's what the scripture says. Above all, we need to understand judgment is coming, all right? Judgment is coming. In the comment section, just write it in. Judgment is coming, all right? The scriptures speak of God's judgment as threefold, all right? And, and I probably won't have time to, do, so this would probably be a good place for us to end. So next week, we'll get into it. But just so that you know, amen, where we're headed in next week's course, we're going to talk about, amen, God's judgment and what the scriptures speak of concerning God's judgment. All right. Um, judgment is coming. The judgment is going to be in threefold. You're going to have the judgment that is to take place in the air. All right. There is judgment that is going to take place on earth. All right. Uh, and then last but not least, you have the judgment, amen, uh, which will be in heaven, amen, uh, the great white throne of judgment. And we're going to get into, amen, those concerning that, uh, um, um, uh, the course of judgment, because from there, all right, <laughs> you have, amen, a numbering mechanism of judgments. You have um, um, uh, judgment number one, which deals with the subjects, all right, then you have the time, you have the place, and you have the base of judgment and the result. All right, so we'll definitely get into those a little bit more. Um, and amen, uh, just more to deal with as it relates to the crowning mechanism, crowning day, what have you. Um, and certainly just want to take a little bit more uh, time to exhaust um, some of these crowns. All right. So again, uh, I hope tonight's Bible class, amen, open our eyes up a little bit. Again, if you had a chance to watch, if you even get a chance, go to YouTube and just look up the coronation service. Of I call it coronation service like it was a church service, but it actually almost was like a church service if you really think about it. Um, go back and look at the coronation of King Charles III and start visualizing the great right throne of judgment and for your labors and for your rewards and for your faithfulness and for your little strength. 
seeing the Lord, amen, crown us, amen, with authority, amen, to reign with him. Judgment is coming, you all. Judgment is coming. And for many of us, amen, we're experiencing the judgment here because of our lack of prayer, our lack of empathy, our lack of concern for the things of God. And I just believe that if the saints would level up in this day, we got too much power to walk around here powerless. We got too much power to walk around here scared, scared of being controversial. What am I scared for? If I've got the power of God on the inside of me, it's time to take authority. It's time for us to take authority. That was our focus throughout the day. Evangelist Green did a wonderful job talking about authority. You can't talk about authority and not talk about power. All right. And that power that God has given us, that dunamis that's on the inside of us, is the power that we have to activate now to set the course of life. Many of us are living in frustration. Many of us are living in you. What do you mean you held hostage at work and you have an authority? You can't speak. You have an authority. Now, I'm not talking about, amen, what's necessary for us, amen, to be diplomatic. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm not talking about going out there, amen, and lose your job. But authority, amen, that we're talking about. The authority that we have to say, Lord, you see this contrary wind that makes me uncomfortable. Move the situation. I had to exercise authority and it meant some bosses had to be placed in other departments. Had to exercise some authority, amen, <laughs> professionally. And sometimes it meant, amen, a, a, a promotion to get out of a situation. Amen. It's time for us to operate with this authority. And makes no sense to have the gift of the Holy Ghost and walk around here like scaredy cats. We got the Holy Ghost, amen, and we we see things, amen, uh, detrimental. We see principalities. We see things that we should rebuke, put on our feet, put on our back, and we never take authority. Well, I hope and pray tonight that something was 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 granted in your spirit of insight concerning, amen, all the things, amen, that are to become of us, amen, the rewarding system of God is faithfulness, and just know judgment is coming, judgment is coming, and when judgment is coming, judgment is coming is not meant to scare you. When I tell you, the great white throne of judgment, amen, will already have been decided who's on God's side or not God's side. You will have receipts <laughs> for the Lord to judge you for your negative works or the great white throne of judgment will be a place for you to be crowned, the crowning ceremony. <laughs> because it will be determined on which, which side you're on. And so we'll open the book to give the receipts and the books that is going. So uh, why lie to ourselves? Why lie to ourselves? If you got a chance to repent today, repent. If you got a chance today, turn back now. What are you waiting for? He can come at any moment. He can come before this broadcast is over. And, and unfortunately, we have to level up. We can't be afraid to preach this stuff, y'all, in the day. We got too much stuff going on in the world right now for us to be ch uh, chasing empty promises and chasing. And I'm not talking about empty promises from the things God has from us. I don't want you to take me out of context. I do believe that God allows us to occupy where we're here on earth. But I'm talking about we're dealing with some crazy stuff in this world right now. And we've got passive Christians. We got Christians that don't know what they got, don't know what they this is this is the teaching that's necessary for us to raise the bar so we raise our own standard. And when you raise your standard, when you take authority, your children take authority. So they won't date nonsense, nonsensical people. They won't entertain evil communication when you take authority, when you tell them to knock that mess off, when you tell them that you can't watch this. No, you're not going to be programmed to 20 hours of, of, of Instagram and, 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 and so many hours just on the computer listening to nonstop. When you exercise authority, no, you're going to change your circle. No, you're going to see who you come and who you interact with. We're going to meet the parents of the people that you hang out with, that you quote unquote call friends to the determine whether or not we need to change the social circle. That's the power I'm talking about, the authority that we have to have. Taking authority might mean, you know what? I got to, I got to, I got to, <laughs> Lord, you got to shift. You got to open up a new door for me professionally. You got to open up. That's what I'm talking about, taking authority. We are living in a day and time when the power of God is critical for us to be playing with power, to be playing with authority, to be playing, amen, like we don't have the gift of God on the inside of us. So again, I pray again, something was said tonight, uh, hearts were open to receive the word of God. Again, encourage you, go back, take a look, amen, at the coronation service. Take a look at the anointing, amen, the oil that was that was put on the head of the king, all right? <laughs> and the sovereign oaths that were taken, the songs that were sang, and the patron, the, the, uh, uh, the, the almost worship-like uh, service that took place. Look at a people, look at a king kneel, uh, uh, knit his 
heart toward a people and a people knit their heart toward a king and everybody on the same page and everybody in agreement and everybody, amen, respecting the authority and to see the crown of continuous and 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 and, and circular, amen, authority bestowed upon an individual, y'all. It's it was something to see and uh and, and, and it answers hopefully the question that somebody had about is the crown literal? Yes. A crown of authority. He will be crowned Lord of Lords. That great, that great, that great coronation service in the city built. <laughs> Amen. Not made by hands. Amen. And you and I will be partakers. You and I will be joint heirs with Christ, which means we will be crowned as well for our labors, for our faithfulness, for our stick to itness. Amen. For our drive, for our resolve in this last evil day. Amen. To live a life that's pleasing unto God. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. I pray that something was said to stimulate us, to stir us. Amen. I pray if anything to challenge us, to convict us, oh God, this last evil day, oh God, to operate in authority and power, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that uh, you would allow us to have holy boldness, oh God, the courage, oh God, to defend the doctrine, to defend the things we believe in, oh God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, take authority to exercise authority, oh God, as you have godly ordained and inspired in our marriages and our singlehood, oh God. Hallelujah in our career paths, O oh God, and our work unto you, O oh God. Strengthen our hands, O oh God. In this last evil day, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, that you would inspire a people, O oh God, to be ready for your judgment, not to be scared of your judgment, but with anticipation, O oh God, to hold on to a little bit of strength that we have, O oh God, that you would see a fortified city based upon our press, our sacrifice, our labor of love in this last evil day. Bless us, O oh God. Bless our upcoming worship services as we celebrate our mothers, O oh God. We pray for peace and victory and strength. We pray, O oh God, that a church would hold on, a church would hang on, a church, O oh God, would hold out, a church would keep pressing, O oh God. Give my sister her press back. Give my brother her press back, uh, uh, his press back, oh God. Give him in the name of Jesus, oh God, the fortitude, oh God, to keep believing and trusting for your soon coming, for your coming back for a church, your coming back for a witness. Hallelujah, you're coming back, amen, for the faithful. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. My name is Professor Pastor Kyron Shorter. We thank you for being with us tonight here at the Temple Church of Los Angeles, California. If you desire to know him, the waters of trouble. And, and 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 we're praying for souls and God is adding to the church. Hallelujah. I take spiritual authority now in the name of Jesus because we used to get letters and stuff that they would send people saying, oh, who's getting saved? Who's getting this? Who's getting that? We're not getting them letters no more. We're not, we're not getting no, you know, God is doing it. God is doing it. The vision is coming to pass. Bethesda Church is that church, y'all. You need to be a part of this experience, this awesome move of God where God is blessing and saving families. It was beautiful to see on Sunday <laughs> a young man be baptized in Jesus' name and his mother want to get baptized and share the experience as well. And we're praying that the Holy Ghost would fall in the name of Jesus. And I certainly believe that we're all going to have testimonies of our loved ones coming and being reconciled with God and finding peace and finding hope. And I would just say, get ready, get ready, saints, get ready, amen, for the exciting things that God is going to do. We're praying for the troubling of water, amen, that God, amen, will continue, amen, to bless and to feel and to save and to inspire us for greater works, amen. If you desire water baptism in Jesus' name, pick up that phone, give us a call, 323-299-2591. Somebody will tarry with you on the phone tonight, amen. If you so desire, amen, uh, uh, you can come Saturday morning, amen, and join our prayer team. And you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost Saturday morning. Amen. You can come be baptized. Amen. Even now, pick up that phone. We will call. We will We will make plans. Amen. We will make it happen in Jesus' name. I'm looking forward to an awesome month of ministry. We're looking forward, amen, to our uh, Sunday service, of course. We're looking forward to our Seniors Day on the 21st. We're uh, going to be celebrating uh, the Pilgrim Progressive Church uh, uh, pastoral anniversary on the 21st as well. We're looking forward to that. Pentecost Sunday, prepare your hearts. Amen. Amen. We're going to be giving sacrificial seed. Amen. Uh, Fifty dollars. Amen. As we celebrate the gift of the Holy Ghost, and these are our tithes and offerings. Uh, come with a special seed that day of fifty dollars. As we thank God. Amen. For the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We have our fellowship meeting Pentecost Sunday as well, four o'clock p.m. So we're looking forward to an exciting month of ministry. Uh, we're looking forward. If you want to be a blessing to our ministry, we have several ways you can be a blessing to us. Uh, Cash App, Zelle, PayPal. You can put it in the mail. Amen. At our corporate address and our mail slot. Forty nine. 36 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles, California. I pray that you'll keep holding out. You'll keep pressing, keep believing. Amen. I can't wait. If I don't see you, amen, again, I pray that it's at the great throne of judgment. You and I are there receiving our crowns. Amen. 
of, of, <laughs> of life, amen, golden crowns, incorruptible crowns, the rejoicing crowns. Uh, I can't wait to see, amen, uh, you all on that great get in the morning. God bless you. Take care, everybody. Peace.